silence your cell phones now. I didn't think I was going to have to save the world this summer. What do you want, Peter? I want to go back on my trip with the girl I really like and tell her how I feel. MJ, I am Spider-Man. No, of course I'm not. I mean, it's kind of obvious. What's going on, YouTube? It's a place to be children. I'm saying he back with another movie experience, and we're here. We're finally here to the final movie of Phase Three, and this movie is long-awaited Spider-Man: Far From Home. So this is a it picks up right after Avengers Endgame. So there there will be no spoilers in this video, but Endgame, y'all should sure already know what happened. Y'all already seen it, okay? So we pick it up right after the death of Tony Stark, and now Spider-Man is living in this post-snap world where the re-snap, where he's trying to figure all this stuff out, especially when his mentor, his father figure, Tony Stark, is not there. So now he wants to take the, the summer off and go out with his friends to enjoy it, but. Once again, when you're a superhero, man, there is no time to rest. So within this movie, I'm going to give y'all guys the good, I'm going to give you guys the bad, and I'm going to give you guys the experience. Start off with the good. The good is that Tom Holland, once again, he is built for this role as Spider-Man. Now, once again, I've always said that Andrew Garfield was a good Spider-Man, but not a good Peter Parker. And Tony McGuire was a great Peter Parker, but a kind of lackey Spider-Man. Tom Holland kind of has all of it mixed into one. And I think he right now is my favorite Spider-Man of, of, of all they did. And he just brings this charismatic and this innocence about him in this movie. And... Uh, you, you, I just love the, the teenage aspect of Spider-Man because we've been getting too many grown men Spider-Man. I like the teenage aspect of Spider-Man in this movie. Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio is probably one of my favorite Spider-Man villains I have seen on screen. Mysterio, I mean, I have a lot of great Spider-Man villains I love because Spider-Man, I think in Marvel Comics, has some of the best villain catalog like Batman in DC. So... I, Mysterio was kind of like one of the ones that I want to see what you're going to look like on screen because of, you know, the illusions that Mysterio does. And I have to say, there are there are points in this movie where I, can, I, can't, I can't give too much away here because yeah, I got to be kind of very vague in this review because of spoilers, but there are parts of this are uh, in this movie where there are CGI scenes and stuff like that, man. I get to my spoiler alert that I was so happy to see, and it was so crisp that I just loved it. I really did love it. Surprisingly, Zendaya was good. Now, I'm not saying that she wasn't good in Homecoming. She was good and to the point where I'm liking the chemistry between them two. She's not Mary J. Watson from the Cosmos, but she is a MJ, and their love connection is cute. And it, it came on to me that I, I, I really find myself liking that about them. I would say that this movie does pick up by the second half. I think it's a movie of two halves in my personal opinion where the second half is just like oh my god we are pedal to the middle and we're, we're going out in this and there are really things where there's really a heart, there's really emotion, there's really a lot of action, there's really a lot of great stuff to it which I uh, appreciate. Now without spoiling too much we now have to get into some of the things I did like the movie so let's get into the bad. Alright, so we all fall under this Marvel umbrella that Marvel in these movies now all is all about comedy. And I, I am all for the comedy. There are just some parts where there it should be more of a serious moment. It should be more of an informative moment. But then they just have to force that comedy on there just to get that laugh. And some things, in all my Marvel movies, I don't need that all the time. Now, Grant, the comedy worked a lot in this movie. It really did. There were just a couple scenes in the movie. I was just like, oh, my God, that I really need you to let it just let it ride. And also, I will say, I said the movie's in about two halves. The, the, the second half is the Spider-Man movie I came to see. The first half felt like kind of like a, a, te a teenage dramedy in a way, kind of a, a little bit, like, kind of like a little teenage angst, high school, stuff like that. So, uh... Some parts of it was cool, and then some parts I was just like, all right, I need this kind to see what kind of thing we're going to kind of pick this up in a little bit of a way. And uh, 
that that's probably one of the more, more, more negatives I have without getting into too many spoilers. So with, with that being said, let's just hop right into the experience. So the experience was, this movie was sold out on a Tuesday. So they opened up some more shows so that uh, I, me and my wife and my son got a chance to get this. So it was a small theater. The funny thing is, the same theater I saw Shaft in is that they kicked Shaft up to the curb and put Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, Far From Home in there. So we watched it. It was great. And there is a post credit scene. Oh my God. Now, you know, I've heard people say this was the best post credit scene ever. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say this is the best post credit scene. If you're a Spider-Man fan, maybe. But I wouldn't say the best post credit scene ever. I would say this was one of the more shocking post credit scenes. This is what a post credit scene or mid credit scene should be. And it, it really had my jaw dropping in this one. And I'm like, oh, it's in my top. Don't don't get me wrong. It's in my top of my mid credit scene endings. But as one of my, it's like the best one. I can't say that yet. But I can definitely say that it is a jaw dropper and you need to see it. And then there's, of course, there's a real post credit scene at the complete end of the movie where I'm trying to understand where the story is going to go from here. So phase four is open to all kinds of things. So I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen here. So, but that was Spider-Man Far From Home, man. I had, had a good time, great summer movie. This is going to be one of my better movies of 2019. And I am going to give Spider-Man Far From Home, I want to say damn near perfect, but I'm gonna, I think it's probably going to go, I'm going to go with a, yeah, I'll go with a damn near perfect. Damn near perfect for me, because uh, Spider-Man uh, Far From Home, well, well, he did some good things. There's a couple things that I, 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 I was like, uh, on, but overall, it's great. Now, if you're going to ask me which one do I prefer between this one and Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2, I can't, I, I can't. Stay tuned for the podcast on that one. So post your comments down below if you guys see Spider-Man Far From Home, if you guys are excited about it. Uh, this is not a spoiler review, so don't spoil the movie for anybody. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this review. And hit the subscribe button for more movie experience reviews right here on Nerd Coalition. So once again, this is NC Place to Be. Show Mr. A&D. And I'll see you at the movies.